Hi, I'm Dan Barker, and welcome to Free Thought Matters, a production of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. And I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. Dan and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which works to keep state and church separate and to educate the public about the views of non-believers. And one of those very well-known non-believers, Steve Benson, is here with us today. Steve Benson is a Pulitzer Prize winning editorial cartoonist who's worked for the Arizona Republic since 1980. And Steve Benson is a former Mormon, the grandson of Mor Mormon President Ezra Taft Benson. And you say you've gone from Latter-day Saint to Latter-day Ain't. So welcome well, to Well, it all started about 30 Radio. years ago, in case you forgot. Where did we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? You called me and said, why in the hell did you do that cartoon? And I've been spiraling down. Because you, you were a conservative editorial cartoonist way back in the beginning, before your views changed. Yeah, but, you know, I always felt this impulsive, like, little gremlin inside of me called liberalism. I came down the birth canal <laughs> saying, wait, I am not really a conservative. <laughs> I was writing it on the wall. But you but, did a cartoon against secular humanists, and Annie Laurie wrote you a letter of complaint. Right, I, did, and I didn't call you, but we, we um, put you on our target list and had you people You were yelling at me you. from like a thousand miles away. No, no. I heard you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's true. And, you know, it's interesting. It was kind of like a lightning bolt. It was like the light that Joseph Smith never saw. It just kind of hit me. I go, <laughs> whoa. It gave me permission, actually, to start questioning myself. You mean her why, letter kind of? Yeah, it just kind of knocked the... It gave me a new perspective. Wow. And my head was aching. Go, wow, what was that all about? And then I thought, wait, she may have a point. It kind of—I've never told you that before. It just kind of be it loosened the the rubble, and yeah. the avalanche began. So wow. thank you very much. <laughs> Look what you've done to my life. <laughs> now your your uh, grandfather was the nominal head of the Mormon Church at, uh, when you were growing up. And then oh, that yeah, was he really became the president of the church in 1985. Of course, Secretary of Agriculture. I think we have some photos, don't we? There, mm -hmm. there you are at the yeah. White House. I'm, there are only two bald guys in that picture, and I'm one of them. The huh. other one is Eisenhower. And you're staring straight at the camera there. Like, what are you thinking about I'm there? thinking, <laughs> man, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Vote for Adlai Stevenson. That's what I was thinking. Now, you were probably thinking, hey, Ike, beware of the military-industrial complex <laughs> or something. Yeah, so, you know, he, Eisenhower originally said, beware of the military-industrial commercialized complex. He mentioned business, and they cut so that So there off. you are with Is that Ike? you with Eisenhower? That's, uh, that's with me. With I I'm still not impressed. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was interesting. My, my grandfather was like the Secretary of Agriculture, plus he was a member of the Mormon Church hierarchy. So I was getting it coming and going. Hmm. You know, I, I felt like here is this big towering man. We would go in and clean up our family cabin up in the uh, no, uh, close to Salt Lake and kill mice, and he would throw them in the fire. Ooh. It was awful. It was like a, an analogy for what happens to you know people who work for freedom from religion. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is what's going <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I could never really say, hey, Grandpa, let's just, like, chill out and talk about stuff. But you were a true believer. I mean, you truly, really, and you, you did your two-year mission to... Um... I went to Japan on my mission. And in Japan, that's where I had my first real uh, question of faith. This is a true story. I mean, Charlton Heston couldn't even compare with this. <laughs> I was up on the flat roof of an apartment building in Okinawa one night, and the winds were blowing, and clouds were going across the moon, and it was like, uh, you know, a typhoon alley. That's what we called it. And I was asking, is the Book of Mormon true? I was asking it because I'd never read it all the way through before I went on my mission. That's another confession. You mean those guys with the white shirts and ties, they haven't necessarily read the book? They're well, uh, I can't speak for all of them, but it sounds like they never read the book as they were. They wouldn't be Mormons. Oh, yeah. but I hadn't read the book all the way through. So I'm up there asking for God to help me, help me, you know, and the winds are rushing and all this kind of stuff. It was a great movie set. And then after hours and hours, I get this little voice in my head, not in my actual auditory yeah. canals, that said, uh, go to bed. You have to get up and work in the morning. Huh. And so that was my first. What kind of answer is that? I'm, I'm pleading for God to tell me what the truth is. And they say, God says to me, shut up and go to bed. you got to yeah. work in the morning. Wow. Well, wow. so after your Mormon um, going out on, on the road for two years, and you, you got your degree from Brigham Young. Brigham right. Young University. Brigham Young. Oh, Brigham you Young. Yeah, let's get that right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. um, uh -huh. what happened with your grandfather? I mean, you had this very dramatic um, Expose basically about well, your grandfather. Uh, yeah, I uh, I begin in in uh, June July of 1970. 
excuse me, when was it? Uh, it was right when I came back. Oh, 1993. 1993, how soon we forget it all becomes like a, this grayish muddle. Uh, I didn't like the way the church was lying. Well, hello. I, but I didn't like the way they were lying about my grandfather's health. They were saying he was peppy and, and yeah, he has some physical ailments, but he was still receiving revelation from the Lord. And, and you know, you could, you could still process that stuff even though you're... Your body was crumbling. Well, it was crumbling from the top down, and, and he was mentally and physically disabled. Wasn't he basically almost comatose? Well, they had it. They dressed him up in like uh, you know a, a running suit, put him in his wheelchair, and they would push him out on the balcony, not off the balcony, but huh. push him out on the balcony, and he would look at the Temple Square, you know, headquarters of the church, and and the last word I ever heard him say, and this is true, we had a family prayer around the, the living room couch in his apartment. And he goes, you know, a long amen. Little did I know that, you know, he was saying, he was agreeing with me all, all wow. the way along on this. But he, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he got to the point where he couldn't answer the door. He couldn't order books from the church bookstore. And all these Mormons were making up these fairy tales to the cognitive dissonance. But was he issuing proclamations and things? Was somebody um, else doing it for him? Was that the deal? Uh, well... The, cho the church spokesman, Don Lefevre, was, uh, you know, I was saying, why, why are you telling lies about my grandfather of uh, health and able to speak? And, and he goes, well, this is a tough job. Yeah, they were having to kind of make stuff up. They could use old speeches that he had given. Uh. You know, it was really kind of sad because my grandfather, one day I was in his office, and he says, and he got tears in his eyes, and he said, I'm afraid I can't deliver these speeches like the saints want me to. That's a, uh -huh. a, a nickname for the Mormons, the saints. And so he was, you know, conflicted and sad that he was kind of losing you it. You were the oldest grandchild, right? I the am the oldest grandchild. grandchild. I have remained that way. Do we have any other pictures of Steve when he was young? Uh... Don't rub it in. What is okay. this picture? Uh... Oh, uh, that's uh, Grandpa when he was Secretary of Agriculture. That's my dad standing there. And, and Grandpa is handing me dirt. Dirt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, dirt on the Mormon church, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, he's just a clot of earth. And uh, I was wearing my Sunday suit, my you know, my best Sunday suit. Oh, because of the agriculture, the dirt, so he became secretary. I got You're it. quick. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, there I am examining dirt. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I want to get into I want to expose it. So what you really started to examine dirt when you realized that they were lying about your grandfather's authority and health. Yes. Didn't you really study? So then what I did was I went back to Salt Lake City and I had two uh, in-depth uh, discussions behind closed doors with Dallin Oaks and Neil Maxwell. Uh, one of them has died, uh, Neil Maxwell, but they were apostles. They're kind of Jesus' version of the Twelve in modern day. That's how the Mormon Church uh, has its structure. you got the Mormon president, you got his two counselors, and you got the twelve, and two of the twelve uh, met with me. And so I asked them like basic questions like, okay, you say you're special witnesses for Jesus that makes you, you know, separate and apart and unique. What's the special witness? How did you get it? How did you get that witness? Now, how many people have a chance to ask Peter, James, and John, yeah, right, what yeah. was your special witness? And they answered him. They answered, you want to hear what they said? What'd they say? Well, Dan Oak said to me, well, I was uh, at the Church Institute of Religion in Chicago, and I had some questions about the church, so I asked my seminary teacher. Oh, yeah, well, that was a long time ago. What did he say? Uh, You're going to be an apostle of the Lord? And, and so that was his special witness to be an apostle. Wow. And Neil Maxwell said, well, I saw my dad give my my sibling a blessing with laying on of hands when they were sick, and he brought him back from the dead. Well, that was your sign that you're supposed to become an apostle when you were a kid? I mean, these are, yeah. you know, anybody can have those testimonials and get up in a camp meeting. Well, I or, could have been a Mormon apostle then. I had all sorts of If stuff, you, you had know? been a Mormon apostle, yeah. the church would have gone a lot farther, let me tell you. <laughs> well, so this all came to a head. You publicly exposed the church, correct? My wife and I at the time, uh, we, um, we read, <laughs> we studied, uh, we asked questions. Uh, Marianne went, my uh, ex-spouse, she went to one of those meetings with Maxwell and Oaks, and I came home from work one day, and she had tears welled up in her eyes, and she looked at me, and she said, Stephen, it's not true. And she had all these books laid out, and she was cross-referencing and color-coding. So, yeah, we, we knew it was not true. And so we, uh, we uh, wrote our own letters of, of, re of resignation. We didn't want to be excommunicated because if you're excommunicated, they wouldn't have excommunicated me anyway because, you know, who I was. But uh, if we were excommunicated, to make it look like we didn't want to be excommunicated. We waited until they kicked us out, right? We, we wanted to, uh, you know, walk out on our own steam. So yeah. this was made public? 
I, there yeah, in Phoenix. I was made public because we went public. So, what a concept. <laughs> so this was, I mean, this changed your life. Yeah, yeah, I got free donuts from the Freedom from Religion Foundation. There you go. Just yeah, this yeah, it morning. did change my life. Actually, what it did is it synchronized me with my, my, uh, my basic uh, impulses. My basic impulses have always been scientific. Uh, and I was, by a genetic accident, dropped, A-bombed into the, the Benson family. I had to fight my way out. I mean, I, the last letter my grandfather wrote me in November of 85 was... A about the cartoon I had been criticizing the Mormon church. The one about the coffee? Yeah, let's uh, look yeah. at that. Do we, we have, have that, that one that about... Uh, what's uh, the it shows the... Ins there we go. Okay, you got the church, a public relations official, and I drew this from real life, of course. They have flat tops and they've got uh, like, uh, little bellies and, and their black suit and the, and the tie and whatnot. And then he's on the phone talking about mad bombers and con men and salamanders. That does it, Sister Jones, get me a cup of coffee. <laughs> and so... I get a, a letter, I know, first it works this way, my grandfather calls me, he <laughs> calls me, and from Salt Lake City, the Mormon Zion, and he says, Stephen, I have a cartoon in front of me, I'd like to read it to you, and I thought, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, Stephen, it's the one about the mad bombers, and so I knew it was coming, and, uh, and, and there's this pause, he reads it to me, and he goes, why? <laughs> and I almost said, well, why not? But, you know, yeah, there's a time and a place for asking these kinds of questions. And he says, Stephen, uh, just go easy on the church. And then he writes me a letter. He says the same thing. I uh, appreciate the way you're using your cartoony talents to expose the evils and the issues of the day, but please go easy on the church. Now, wait a minute, folks. My grandfather's about to become president of the church, and uh, God is concerned about cartoons that are being done. <laughs> 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 but it was your job too. I mean, you you yeah. had a scientific impulse, but you also had this artistic drive to express and and comment on the news and on. It, I really, I, I remember the first drawing I did. I was three years old. This was a couple of years ago, and hmm. uh, we had these books. My parents had this large library at home, and I replicated the same thing. It was full of church books, and mine is full of anti-church books. Hmm. But I pulled down a book and I opened it up, and it was a cute little book for three-year-olds. It had little puffy white clouds and houses and flowers and trees and stuff. And so I drew these like bird-like monsters tripping down the, the clouds. The clouds were there. I just added, you know, the monsters, you know, with the bird heads, Archaeopolis. I was ahead of my time, dude, you know, yeah. dinosaurs and, and birds are connected. Did I know that at three years old? The that was Jesus telling me. It was the so, spirit of Charles Darwin. Yeah, there we go. You've got that mannequin. That was like I go in, I mean, in the wax museum. <laughs> if you ever come to the Freedom from Religion Foundation building, you walk in, there's this guy who looks like a mortician. It's Darwin. <laughs> He's standing there going, let me out Saying of this nothing. body. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think we have to take a break. Is that right, Bruce? Thank goodness. Uh, so um, stay tuned. We're talking with we're, Steve Benson. And we're going to see some cartoons about the religious right. After the got. break, we'll see some more of Steve's cartoons about the religious right. Grandpa, are you watching this? Okay, wherever <laughs> you are. So we're talking with Steve Benson, Pulitzer Prize winning editorial cartoonist who went from Latter-day Saint to Latter-day Ain't. Stop, you're killing me. I'm Ryan, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. Ever since I was young, I've always been taught to ask questions, ask why, and use the scientific method to see how things can be improved. I learned early on that this doesn't work at church, at least not for long. You'll see the hypocrisy and the inaccuracy of everything. I think that we should eliminate religion and treat each other with dignity and respect as people inherently do. Religion is divisive, and I think we can all be good people without the lure of eternal salvation or the threat of eternal punishment. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. Welcome back to Free Thought Matters. I'm Dan Barker. I'm Annie Laurie Gellar, 
And Steve, you're telling us how you exposed lies in the Mormon Church about your grandfather, who was the head of the Mormon Church, mm -hmm. and then you uh, publicly um, exposed this. This was brought a lot of wrath upon your head, correct? I mean, this was not a small thing. My family really reacted negatively. I got bombarded. I mean, you talk about lava bombs off Kilauea, there's nothing compared to what my, my parents uh, 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 criticized me, my siblings criticized me, got hundreds of letters from Mormons who were saying, you know, we, we one of my cousins, she wrote me, she says, how can this be true that he can't be talking and communicating with God? Uh, we went to his apartment and he squeezed the little baby fat legs on my little kid's uh, leg, you know. So that proves. Hey, that proves it, yeah, so. And didn't also somebody come, uh, you, you were living in suburban Phoenix and mm -hmm. offered to buy your house? I remember that was quite, you know, like, in other words, get out of here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had people, uh, you know, faking their way into my house. And my stake president, this is not like a steakhouse, it's a, like a parish, they call it a stake. Uh, he wrote me a letter and said that you are filled with the spirit of the devil, and like the stories of the Book of Mormon, you will be trampled to death under the spirit of the devil, and this kind of thing. And so, you know, but. but it, I'm thinking to myself, why would I ever believe these kinds of threats? Hmm. You know? So you became an atheist at that point, right? E Pretty much? Well, no, I didn't have this burning in the bosom at that point to become an atheist. I just think I just came into synchronization with where I had always, you know, been. Where I really thought my natural inclinations were. I, was, I really liked science. I wanted to be an archaeologist. I'd go out in the fields behind my home. I had asthma, so I had to stay in the house and I'd sneak out when my mom wasn't looking. And then she'd catch me and she'd say, What are you doing outside? And I'd say, well, I'm holding my breath so I don't get asthma. <laughs> and and, and uh, I would dig around in the dirt with a little whisk broom and a little pick. And I was, you know, I had these images of discovering dinosaurs and stuff. And then I took biology, and uh, in ninth grade, my teacher said, that's not a very good uh, final exam, but you really draw frogs well. <laughs> <laughs> so you went from being this kind of like the darling conservative representative of Mormonism mm -hmm. in a prestigious position at a newspaper. You mm -hmm. went from that to being flipped to more liberal after a while. And then from that point on, your, your cartooning started becoming more edgy. You know? Right. Well, I did a cartoon that got me kicked off this high council, as they called it, for the Mormon Church. Twelve guys who pretend like they're apostles, like, you know, local yeah. leaders. And I did a cartoon on a Mormon governor, Evan Meekum, who was impeached and convicted. And I had it coming down from heaven like the returning Jesus. And instead of the Book of Mormon, he's got the Book of Moron. Yeah. And these <laughs> angels with uh, trumpets are blowing their, uh, their, their musical instruments. But they're not angels. They're rats and angelic close. <laughs> and, and so my stake president says, Stephen, you are using your God-given talents to abuse and, and, and ridicule the sacred uh, symbols of the church. And so he kicked me off the high council, which gave me more time to abuse the sacred relics of the <laughs> church. And then he, he writes me a letter and he says, ever since I released you from your calling, as they call it, your cartoons have gotten bitter. And that really ticked me off. Mm. I wrote him a letter. I said, better or bitter? He, got, he was bitter and I was getting better. You're better, you're quality. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he wrote me, a, I wrote him a letter and I said, you're not my editor. Huh. I'm sorry, you're not my editor. And if I had a chance to do this again, I would do it again. Huh. And then he, he was an English professor at ASU and he passed away. I think he had a heart attack when he saw that. Huh. So we um, don't have that one particular cartoon, but we do have a bunch of your cartoons lampooning the religious right. Mm -hmm. So let's look at some of them. Uh, Jimmy Swagger, <laughs> a good old Jimmy Swagger. Reading I saw him the book in. A, of I saw him in a airport in Dallas, Texas, waiting, and he was dressed in the in the waiting area by the gate, completely in black. Uh, Jimmy Swagger, the, the televangelist who yes. fell from grace because of his uh, involvement so with. Yeah, but he more. wouldn't actually have sex with prostitutes. He would just have them come to his motel room and dance for him. Or yeah, is that what it? What's so, another one here? Oh, yeah. Oh, this, oh so Haggard. Yeah, Haggard. Reverend Haggard. Yeah. You know, all these guys that are conflicted, you know, they're railing against pornography and other evils, and then down in their basement, they have 25,000 videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just doing research. Well, he was caught with, uh, buying meth from some uh, mm -hmm. gay and, prostitute or something, and here he was a big megachurch leader. That was funny. Yeah, that's right. Now, this is the cartoon that you won the Pulitzer for. Yeah, back in the day, they only had, uh, you could only uh, submit 
ten cartoons. So you had really had to pick the ones you wanted. Just a minute, no, uh, this cartoon <laughs> ran, and my publisher didn't like it. Okay, but back in the day, if we got a lot of letters, we would run it again. And so uh, he uh, he didn't like it, and then we ran it again, and then it ran the poetry. I mean, I hate to do this to my publisher, but you know. Mm -hmm. So you and that was in what the mid. What, what year was that? 95 was it? 95, yeah. I mean, so I we was, reprinted that cartoon, mm -hmm. yeah. even though we had followed your infamous even though you didn't have career as a believing cartoonist. Yeah, we reprinted we that on the mm -hmm. front page. I think we sent your publisher 50 today. bucks or something. But, there you go. Uh, uh, because these, it's, uh, these believers come cheap. It's such a major cartoon. Let's and the see some more here when we get it. Fleece my sheep. Oh, huh. yeah, I mean, this, this, this scam. I mean, really, folks, is this what the Founding Fathers had in mind uh, with regard to the separation of church and state so that, that the church could be separated from the state? The church and the state are melded. It's hand in glove. They, they feed off of each other and they help each other. Yeah. It, it is an evil cabal if there is such a thing as evil. You know, that's, that's how it works. Uh, and this one we also reprinted. I don't know if this you know that. This was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, before we knew you. I mean, this is Today's a, School Prayer, and I don't know if you can read it. Right. God, I mean, Buddha, trying to co kind of cover your butts for everybody. Yeah. You know, and this is what happens when you're trying to be... But the public school system, if you want to go to a private seminary and learn about the mythological Jesus, well, they're fine. But having public uh, employees teaching religion, well, it's impossible, as your cartoons show us. How many gods are you going to put up there, right? I think right. we have some more cartoons about public schools. Oh, there's the Boy Scouts. Yeah, no, the we Boy Scouts have really come around. They've come and, around on gays and girls, but they still guess. discriminate against non-believing kids. And I don't know how much longer they can continue to do that. But Right, so, I mean, like, uh, they allow gay s scoutmasters, but they were kicking out atheist kids who were professing their non-belief, yeah, right? So, so you're going to have to change that cartoon for the next round. So, so don't, you're not my now, editor. Here's, here's a very funny one. The mm -hmm. only, this is the only... What is it? The um, only bodily organ in the bedroom <laughs> that worries me. Yeah, you know, the irony <laughs> of it all. The conservatives who think that the best of all worlds is have no government except when uh, we're using the government to pro promote our religious agenda or yeah. whatever the agenda might be at the time. And mm. here's a cartoon, I think, that you, I think we have, do we have that cartoon? I you think gave we have the original here. For yeah, our you daughter. stole them without my permission. And but, uh, so what, the little boy. Yeah, yeah, well, there were several, you know, cases that uh, went before the courts on on uh, the pledge. The pledge is a national prayer in 1954, as you all know. Uh, under God was inserted. The original author of the pledge was a socialist commie puke, and he did not intend it to be amended like that. But they stuck it in during the Red Scare of the 50s, and Dwight Eisenhower said, now we're going to have millions of children every day invocating to, you know, yeah, yeah. to God. Well, you did another one on the pledge, uh, Yeah, I think I this think, was so. after 9-11. This is an issue. This is the one that we have the original of, and we have that framed mm -hmm. in our house. Should mm -hmm. I read it? Yeah. yeah. I pledge allegiance to my conscience, not some flag-driven collective groupthink in America, and to the First Amendment for which I sit, one voice, individual, constitutional, with liberty and free expression, for all. Bravo. Yes. Well, thank goodness I didn't have an editor to kind of chop that up. You know. <laughs> here's yeah. some more, more stuff. And I here's the founders. To the wall. Well, I was just so invigorated that I was passionately behind this effort to declare who, who was the plaintiff out of California? Michael, Michael, Michael Newdow. Newdow, yeah. Uh, to the, the, yeah. Well, you don't have any standing because you're not married anymore. Well, she's still my kid, you know, and, and, yeah. and he just thought this was. Uh, an egregious violation. Yeah, because he won it in the state courts. Yeah, he, but the, then at it the was, Ninth Circuit. And then it was overturned in. Um, and then against the Supreme religion Court got, the, they wiggled yeah. out of it by saying you have no standing. Yeah, they were Excuse talking me. about the under God and the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he was standing. He was standing against this violation of the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. And how many of the founders were, uh, you know, maybe at best deist and at worst like Thomas Paine, almost atheist, if not atheist. Yeah. So I think we have still some more cartoons. Oh, and this man, is after 9-11. We have this one in framed this one, in our yes, office. Yes, you donated that. My God, can beat up your God. Good, the cartoons have gone. You, you sent it to us and you signed it to us. So you gave it to I us. I was under the influence of the devil when I did that. Yeah, okay. And, oh. oh, this is a good one. So what do you want to be when you blow up? <laughs> you know, they use these innocent little bomb carries, these kids. That, uh, that takes a lot of guts and courage on the part of an adult to say to a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, trust me, I'm, I'm just going to wrap some Christmas lights around you 
and uh, we're going to have and a go show. And go deliver this message to somebody. And deliver it? this message to somebody. And in the meantime, they get all the money, they stay in power, and the kids die. Yeah. And this, this one is, is not recent, <clears throat> but it still remains very timely. Mm -hmm. Resigning in order to spend more time with my family values. <laughs> yeah. the GOP. Yeah. I mean, that's what's happening now. Yep. Who's the latest one to resign? I mean, I, I'm losing track of them. And then the Terry Schiavo case where yeah. she was technically brain dead and there was that big controversy. They, they ran into her nursing home trying to pull the plugs of, you know, or what? Yeah. Uh, what to was keep her alive. They keep her alive. They wanted to keep her alive. and. And uh, she has specifically said, yeah. I want, because she was reading a newspaper article with her friend at the cafeteria one day about somebody who was in a vegetative state and was be kept, being kept yeah. alive unnaturally. And she says, I never want to be like that. And that went to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And that was used to overturn these efforts to keep her alive. And yeah. wasn't the family in touch with you? Or you did a lot of questions? Yes, cartoons. yes. In fact, uh, I gave, uh, you don't have the original because I gave it to them. But... Uh, yeah, I met the father, and then he, unfortunately, uh, then committed suicide, seriously. Wow. Wow. I don't know why, but... Uh, so what is this? Ev oh. Evolution is a myth. This O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah. After all, why aren't monkeys still evolving into humans? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a, a Secretary of Education, Diane Douglas, in Arizona right now, who is trying to impose creationism upon public school students. We've been through this argument. 1981, Louisiana. Then the Dover case, the Kitzmiller yeah. versus reality. You know, and, and, and still, this is going to get overturned in the courts, and we're going to waste a lot of money to get there again. Yeah, but it gives them something to fight for, I yeah. guess. Uh, well, what we're school. fighting for is for, you know, the what, what Emerson said was the integrity of one's mind. Yeah, yeah. So any, any more there to see, or are we pretty much... Uh, uh, this is a good one to end on. No oh, yeah. need to point. I figured it out myself. <laughs> yeah. Human genetic code. Yeah, give us enough time and we'll figure it out. And the thing I like about science is if you don't know something, you just leave the gap and eventually the gap gets yeah. filled. Yeah. And here's the final cartoon for today's show. God less America. This is the eagle that you drew to end our Tunes and Tunes show. Instead of singing God bless America, we sang God less America. My minds, my, my own. own. Well, thank you, Steve Benson. It's really been thank a pleasure you, having you Lori. with your wit thank and your sometimes funny wit and uh, your, your artistic talent and thank your you. commitment to free thought. Uh, the devil made me do it, and thank you so much for helping. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because free thought matters.